Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. So we have the announcement, for, so first I would like to uh, uh, thank our sponsor for the pizza today, uh, Weather.com, and I think you have uh, something to say. Uh, we just finished very quickly, so um, please remind that uh, at, at the end, uh, after the talk, uh, if you are interested, we are going to a bar, but, you know, uh, a few blocks away. Uh, so it will be, uh, and Peter will be there, so it will be an occasion to continue the conversation with him. Uh, and I would like to ask uh, very quickly if we have uh, other announcements. Um, so we have something to say. Uh, yeah, I got, a, I got an email from uh, Dick Wall today saying he wanted to announce that the Stairway to Scala uh, class is being offered in New York from April 30th to uh, May 4th. Um, and you can just go to escalate, uh, escalate, uh, escalatesoft.com to get details. I took the course, the five day course. It's just astonishing. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I was like, mm -hmm. with Sally, and I feel like, okay, maybe. Yeah. So it's, it's very much worth it. Thank you. Yeah, I've seen the agenda. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, welcome. <laughs> hey, yeah, thanks for uh, giving us a chance to chat. My name is uh, uh, Greg Warden. I run uh, engineering for so about a 100 person startup called Where.com. <laughs> About eight months ago, we were acquired by PayPal, which is for eBay, and so we're kind of out here spreading that word a little bit. We're doing some pretty interesting stuff, and we're going uh, to add like 50 people this year and 100 next year, and so we're kind of like full on hiring mode right now, cool mobile, local stuff on the client side, and then back end services. And Java Spring mostly now, but we're looking at Scala for lots of stuff. Um, Pinko runs uh, the backend services team and some big hit stuff, and it's pretty cool. So I'm going to have to leave actually, but if you're looking or interested or whatever, talk to this guy um, at the end, and uh, we'd love to talk to you. And we're really excited to be uh, part of the community here. And it's a lot. Uh, for version 1. Um, 
what was really interesting about the uh, 1.0, and that's why I asked whether you guys had a chance to play with it, uh, was this um, um, you know, developer console, which pretty much lets you compile things on the fly. And because it was like a Java environment, it was like a really uh, interesting new way of uh, developing uh, your application. Uh, essentially, what I'm talking about is something like you start the developer console, you go to the browser, uh, you then switch to your editor, you make changes in your editor, editing Java files, switch back to your, the browser, uh, refresh the page, and then you're going to see the result compiled, or if there's a completion error, then in, within the browser, you're going to see the error message highlighted, um, and then you can just go back to your source and start again. So what uh, what's missing from this workflow is that TD is kind of like compiled and deployed uh, kind of uh, process that we, we all know both from Java and Scala uh, side. Uh, how cool, I mean, it was like really cool uh, feature, however, like it required many uh, kind of like um, custom hacks. Um, so uh, essentially that really meant that like uh, a 1.0 as well as it, uh, SQLC, uh, it required like a specific kind of like runtime, which I would call like a, a specific play runtime, uh, in order to support um, the, uh, this kind of like uh, kind of a special source or magic, uh, which was um, pretty much kind of uh, on the fly simulation. And also, for example, like your Java uh, classes got like properties and like uh, certain features were added with by code enhancement. Uh, but as you can imagine, that kind of required to build like pretty much like a whole uh, platform. So instead of using the cell that the API, Play 1.0 was using its own uh, runtime in order to provide this kind of uh, hot redeploy, uh, hot redeployment. So it's using a, a special compiler, it is a special class loader, and it uses bytecode enhancement. And as you can imagine, in order to um, support all of these, like you really have to have that one time. That, that, uh, why it was possible to bundle up the whole thing and run it in a server container, uh, but still kind of like uh, tricky to um, um, kind of run play 1.0 on say like on a, on a cloud uh, uh, service provider setup or something like that. Uh, other than that, like uh, play 1.0 is its own uh, kind of like dependency management. Uh, Kind of system which was not using any of the uh, uh, existing big Java uh, uh, kind of like uh, PL tools, such as tennis management tools, and, and for me, that's for IB or anything like that, right? But using something uh, specific, which again, like in certain organizations, of course, like uh, it looks like a hard uh, uh, However, like the ecosystem like grew, a lot of people really like the kind of that they experience, uh, which I can really kind of summarize in. Uh, I guess like one way I would say that's like through the user experience that uh, we try to uh, provide. I think that's kind of specific, so I couldn't really think on the specific features. But uh, I think we really try to pay attention to I don't know to the, to the small small things to, to the details that uh, you should have your documentation ready when you're developing. The, you, the development experience should be uh, as pleasant as running your uh, application in production. And uh, the, the other point I would like to make is that, like, so uh, uh, when Play 1.0 was written, uh, most of the web uh, frameworks were like this kind of deep monolithic uh, full stack frameworks, for example, React yes, Django. And uh, what happened since uh, actually with the, all of these frameworks, they started kind of this kind of uh, idea that, like, um, how we could like modularize our, our frameworks because it's just too big. Uh, you know, a lot of people like uh, stop using that. Traditional databases, or uh, at least the mixed in like NoSQL solutions. <laughs> so many of the many of the kind of the standard features and many of the standard ideas that the whole MVC, uh, 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 the, the whole MVC uh, uh, kind of like idea uh, represented, kind of like change over time. So what I mean is that like uh, JavaScript became like really significant uh, a, a player, like I mean, uh, and then whole MVC.
Now, that said, uh, playing one computer is still like a really good choice because it's, uh, of course, it's much more accurate than uh, 2.0, but it has like different uh, uh, kind of like trade offs. Uh, so that's the history of uh, the framework. Uh, so I guess the question really is like, so why, uh, why we came out with the uh, uh, the idea that like you need an entire new uh, framework and with, uh, with um, uh, kind of like making changes uh, across the board and stuff like that. So that's like I think a useful question. Like, uh, like we would like to write like a web framework in uh, 2011. Um, and not to mention like every write in like a few months. So that sounds kind of like I guess crazy, but I try to convince them like. Yeah. So. Um, so the difference is, um, um, uh, and um, and I really kind of like to, to summarize it. I think it's here. Uh, so so the, the the difference is really coming from the fact that like to oh, uh, adopt this Scala uh, for the for the core uh, uh, framework as the kind of the <coughs> some of the things that uh, uh, previously um, we could achieve, with, for example, white enhancement and stuff like that. Now Scala kind of provides it. Uh, so, uh, why uh, the specific uh, 2.0? So, uh, besides the core uh, was uh, Ruby and, uh, and Scala, um, it, Scala also became like first class citizen. So, previously, the 1.0 had just like a really strong Java API, and the Scala support was kind of like not But with the 2.0, the Scala API is a first class citizen. Uh, besides, I mean, we, we using Scala. Uh, in the core platform, uh, the templating uh, solution. Now, uh, uh, I mean, actually, you can plug in any templating solution you would like, but the one that uh, play, provides out of the box is also within Scala. Uh, we now are building uh, on SPT, which, uh, which is using actually IB under the hood, uh, and we kind of get to a point where play is as um, standard as it gets. So, what it means that like you can. Uh, drop in play as a dependency, uh, all the requirements and uh, uh, the kind of like the special uh, special things that we had to play uh, 1.0 now are gone. So you really can uh, you you really can uh, think about play both as like a full framework and also as a library. Uh, maybe I actually talk about that uh, a bit later. Um, I mentioned like uh, the importance of uh, the uh, the JavaScript in the front end. So now this whole kind of on the fly compilation was extended with JavaScript, uh, JavaScript compilation. By that I mean that like CoffeeScript, which is not really uh, a compilation. So, but, so the whole idea is that like uh, when you make changes in your browser, when you make changes, make changes in your editor, and then you refresh your browser, not only your Scala or Java classes will be compiled, but your JavaScript as well within the same set. Uh, and, and the other, <coughs> other crucial thing is that like, because uh, uh, a, a lot of people now have like, uh, different requirements in terms of uh, like modules and then kind of various parts of like the framework that you need, now you kind of create like a more kind of modular system where there's a small tiny part which is a core framework and everything else is pretty much like optional. You're not using databases, fine, you don't have to use it. You can just use the core module, or so it's more likely to try to provide um, this kind of like ecosystem of plugins. Uh, uh, like, for example, Node.js has something similar, although I don't know they're not really bringing uh, like any metaphors like that. But the whole idea really is that uh, so you have like small core framework, and everything else is implemented as a, as a plugin. Uh, and the other, other big change uh, uh, was uh, you know, kind of like providing all this kind of uh, Async um, kind of ID has mechanism. So by that I mean, for example, we have really, um, really serious like app support. We can provide all sorts of kind of streaming uh, APIs. Uh, we have some kind of support. Uh, you can stream your content, uh, but it's just uh, basically to a comment uh, uh, service, or if you just want to uh, stream uh, essentially anything like um, <coughs> anything like that. Uh, Many of these things uh, on this list, unfortunately, were just not possible with the uh, 1.0. So that's why uh, that's why the, the API change was uh, and the whole kind of rewrite uh, was necessary. So, but anyway, 
so just um, to go into uh, a bit more details about uh, the features. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, Play 2.0 is supporting both uh, both Scala and Java. Uh, what it means in practice, really, that you can be like a Java developer, and um, you pretty much would not need to really um, interact with Scala if you don't want to. However, because Scala is part of the whole experience, dropping to Scala is really easy. So you can start your application, say, developing in Java, and then when you feel like uh, you're comfortable with Scala, or uh, you just want to try out Scala, then you can write, say, your unit test in Scala. Uh, but you don't have to use it. But, uh, but, 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 but it's available uh, now. And I think that the, the, the API quality is almost, uh, almost the same, so uh, equally good. Um, that the framework is still kind of st uh, stateless, that whole uh, philosophy has uh, really changed. Uh, there are like a few frameworks that uh, uh, kind of like pushing more like the, the kind of stateful idea, but um, uh, they, in this, uh, at least in this uh, respect, is uh, really uh, close to kind of the traditional DC frameworks uh, because it's completely stateless. <coughs> The only state that you can have is really just uh, in your session is like a, basically just like it's an active cookie. So anything that you can fit there, uh, that's pretty much uh, kind of the state that the, uh, the thing that kind of supports. And as I mentioned, uh, the development console and the whole kind of compilation uh, was extended with uh, JavaScript and uh, CSS kind of compilation. So you can call a copy script compilation. compilation. Um, one of the benefits of using Scala is that uh, certain parts of the of a web framework now can be compiled. So, what are typical MVC uh, kind of uh, parts of like a framework? Like usually, there is a part either uh, within your classes or within a separate file where you say that like I would like to execute this piece of code uh, when this specific URL is called. Uh, it's, uh, in, in a real Django situation, it's usually defined as a separate uh, routing file. In, a, in other uh, smaller frameworks, uh, sometimes it's bundled with, uh, uh, within like the, the, the method that uh, you can call as, as, say, as an implement as an annotation or a decorator, depending on your, uh, on your language. Uh, well, what, what, what we did uh, with the play, really, is that um, this routing file that we provide is actually compiled. But it means that like, when you say that uh, uh, I would like to call the specific method with get, uh, and then you define, um, so um, this is a specific uh, this is a specific class that I'm talking about. So what, what you see here is that um, uh, when you try to compile your application, you define the, the, uh, the routing in such a way that you define the verb that you want to execute, uh, you can define the, the URL that you would like to execute, the, and then, of course, the, um, the underlying uh, class and method. Now, what's interesting about this uh, screen, really, is that like, if you make any typo uh, by referencing your class, you make it bigger. Can you make it bigger? Oh, I don't know how. I think it's going to have a little now. Can you do that? I thought in Google Doc there was a way to set in the presentation mode. Yeah, I think that's... It is presentation mode. If you're using a Mac, you can pinch out. It should. But anyway, so long story short, if you make a typo in your routing definition, you're going to get a compilation error, not like runtime error, again, save time. Same. Uh, same goes for, for example, your, your template. So uh, previously we had like a, a, a template thing, so you can do it in Ruby. Of course, like if you need any uh, 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 templates, then you will just see like after you kind of like uh, compile your uh, classes and you them. Uh, now because we're using uh, Scala for templates, uh, uh, templates are also compiled. So essentially, uh, most parts of your, your application are compiled. Your build file is compiled. Uh, your uh, writing file is compiled, your JavaScript is compiled, and your templates are compiled. Uh, other than that, um, we provide like really good like, auto integration. I'm not 
attitude. And then if you come in there, it's up in a place like um, beautiful middle where uh, that Redmill uh, has uh, an excellent uh, Java API as well. So you pretty much can write like a play application and using Java and uh, still <coughs> use, for example, Java uh, if you want to. Uh, but the kind of like seamless of integration I'm talking about is more kind of <coughs> like where you can stream uh, Aqua uh, messages, like actor messages to, to the response, or you can uh, essentially send messages to another actor that the director would send uh, back messages and in chunks that would uh, 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 kind of send this information to, to the browser. I will actually show a short demo about that. Uh, and, and all the kind of like other asynchronous uh, goodness that the uh, kind of like we mentioned. So for example, we have like a, a comment that uh, uh, support and all of these uh, uh, kind of like uh, streaming um, <coughs> Solutions we provided uh, by like uh, kind of like a design pattern uh, that I think uh, we did from Haskell, which is the <coughs> enumerator uh, interfee kind of idea that uh, I will uh, I will mention briefly, but I guess it's like a, a separate se a session altogether. But uh, the main idea really is that like instead of thinking about iOS, uh, something that you really um, uh, something that you really can just like, uh, I don't know, from, uh, from outside that you really can uh, create like specific design patterns or a, a specific uh, consumers and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, basically mechanisms to kind of map uh, the, the, the certain uh, parts of like that whole IO processing to, uh, to the, for example, to the response. But again, as I mentioned, I will try to talk about the briefly, but it's somewhat an advanced uh, topic. Uh, other than that, like, uh, play also comes with like, a, a functional and unit test factor. Uh, again, both available for uh, Java and Scala. Uh, we have like, um, uh, kind of like a plugin system, so if you want to, uh, for example, include uh, I don't know, Spring, Juice, or uh, whatever kind of like uh, uh, the support for a MongoDB, then it's really easy to just uh, create like a plugin and uh, make sure that it's available for your application. And other than that, like we provide quite a few other kind of uh, <coughs> generic uh, APIs for for everyday like uh, development. For example, we have like a small cache uh, cache API. We have like a JSON. Uh, and uh, API, we have uh, like a wrapper and like an async uh, HTTP client, and we provide uh, form handling uh, as well. And as I mentioned, the dependency management is not happening uh, via SDP, which I'm just using uh, ID. So this is really just, uh, I mean, I just wanted to show how this kind of uh, on the fly compilation uh, looks like. Uh, it, it's not really. Um, Working because of the resolution, I guess I can even demonstrate this. It's not, it's not that complicated, but essentially what happened here was that I made some changes in my source file. I switched to the browser, refresh the page, and then uh, this is the error screen I got. Of course, now I see that like the error was somewhere here. So if I switch back to my uh, to my editor, then uh, it's very easy to see what might be the problem. And uh, this is like a kind of like a compile uh, compilation error. If something was wrong in the <coughs> file, I mean, this is the place where uh, where you define uh, which piece of code should be executed for what kind of uh, HTTP request. <coughs> and uh, this is like a compilation error uh, for for a template. Just like a few words about the whole templating uh, solution. So. Uh, there are like, I don't know, 10, 15 different templating solutions just in Scala. I think in Java there are at least 35. Uh, so it, it's usually like really hard to uh, get right, I guess. Um, everyone has uh, his or her specific uh, ideas, like a lot of people like uh, logic class templates, and uh, some people still prepare like some, some kind of controversy uh, in their templates. I think play is kind of sitting in between. Uh, it kind of like provides certain uh, but that's more kind of like um, it's really just to make sure that you can have those like uh, HTML kind of like I don't know, elegant like and uh, also kind of like type safe way because uh, it's using style under the hood. So 
set and scalar expressions uh, are available. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying that like it's kind of like JSP, uh, but uh, I think probably the closest to is that um, like uh, Ruby has um, this template solution called ERD. I think that's pretty much the closest. Uh, that said, uh, because everything is like implemented as a plugin, somebody prepares uh, one of the uh, other 65 or I don't know, maybe this stuff. Uh, the library is like it's really easy just to uh, to plug in yours. So it's usually like uh, I guess like it's a private thing. So uh, who, who likes what and why? So I, I would rather I don't go into there, but, uh, but there this is the, the best for everyone. But we do think that like uh, it's trying to keep the balance. And uh, here like just like a, another screen on the show where like the the issues with like JavaScript compilation. You can see it's the same, uh, same error screen, except my your error uh, highlighted is actually not the task file, but the task file. What's happening is behind the curtain, when you hit compile, uh, well actually when, uh, when the server is triggering like a reload, then uh, we call uh, Google's Closure JavaScript compiler. And, uh, for example, copy to compiler as well. If there is an error, we try to present it in the same manner. We present like normal Scala or Java or rat, uh, writing uh, error messages. But this pretty much uh, provides like a really unified uh, experience for users to use like uh, uh, they're working on the front end uh, and just uh, working on JavaScript <coughs> working on the back end, you can interact with this development console the same way. Okay, um, so I just want to show like um, how uh, kind of like um, how serious we are, we are about like providing like two people you kind of do the API. So the way the whole the whole thing works, uh, feel that like we should think about like ten fifteen simple applications with the framework, which you kind of think that like are uh, gonna give you a good idea of what you can do with the framework. But also so you can use these templates as uh, as templates so you can start building your application. Uh, using this template. Uh, so uh, we have about like four or five uh, sample, sample applications uh, that uh, exist both in, in, in Scala and Java, and you can actually directly compare the two kind of like uh, kind of experiences, which I think it's uh, too, uh, really useful. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's even possible to mix in uh, two languages within, within one project, so you can have one control everything in Scala and one control everything in Java and vice versa. Uh, but this is uh, for, uh, this is just an example uh, uh, within uh, kind of uh, Java uh, and this is uh, kind of like a, the same thing uh, but just written in, in Scala. Just uh, want to show this kind of like uh, important thing that like we really have this kind of uh, uh, an easy way to see uh, which one fits your need, or like uh, if you want to compare the kind of the Scala experience to the Java experience, uh, then uh, it's really easy because uh, we try to kind of provide like a, a similar uh, like API as well, I mean, similar in that sense, that like uh, as much as the, the specific language provides, of course, in the case of Java, there, there are uh, there were certain things that we just didn't do because of uh, uh, that language. Uh, this is um, this is um, uh, one of the kind of like uh, the, the features that uh, we're providing. Uh, whereas you can uh, from from within like uh, a test, you can uh, fire up like a whole application and run your functional test. Uh, this one is uh, actually JavaScript everywhere. Uh, the underlying engine is um, uh, Google Selenium WebKit, Google Web Driver. And uh, you can uh, you can either use uh, like a uh, like a command line engine which is which is a unit, or you can plug in like Chrome or anything like that. And this would this test would run in context. By the time in that like if you have JavaScript, the whole application will boot up, and then you can test it in context. It's not just like a unit test, uh, which you of course are to write. But what I find uh, kind of interesting about this is that because it's like a I think it's a spec, uh, it's kind of like a mixture. Uh, 
play phone that can do addition tests to invite it's a it's a partially dependent uh, with this uh, framework. You also have like a unit test, but kind of uh, uh, combine the two because we have a like, uh, serious type of <coughs> test as well. There, say uh, you want to test whether the Ajax support is working or the comment support is working. You can't really test that easily uh, without having an application that's running. So what's happening here is that like um, we fire up like an application on the specific port and then check whether the, uh, in the response you're going to find that uh, it'll work there and then we check whether so this is the kind of the function I'm going to run it alright so uh, I'm going to show like a few other demos and then I guess like uh, if you guys have questions or like that uh, so I mentioned that um, uh, I, wanna, I would like to show like five examples, but uh, I mean, in time frames, like, uh, I mean, uh, like two other examples. The best thing about uh, these demos, and that's why I, I chose these, uh, most of them are available online. So like after the presentation, you can, uh, you can play, with the, 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 play with them, so to speak. Uh, so uh, the first thing I would like to show is um, uh, this kind of like add-on that um, that we created like at uh, the uh, this, this one just demonstrates like how easily the new version of play kind of uh, scales down. So for example, if you if you uh, if you don't need like a full fledged framework, you just however want to use play as like an HTTP library, then you can use uh, for example like a, a, a this library, which is like a standard uh, normal kind of like SVT uh, kind of project. So there is nothing play specific about it. Uh, and uh, as you can see from the API, <coughs> yeah, is actually using Amphitheater uh, kind of extractor library. So it's kind of like, I guess you can see that like it's Amphitheater on top of play. So just for the curious. Um, now I just, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention this, but uh, this is really just beside the point that the, the main thing uh, here is that uh, play is not just uh, like kind of like a full batch framework, but you can use it also just like a batch. Like a front end for your for services, if you just need HTTP uh, layer, but you don't need like a full framework, then you still use uh, the, the, either like directly, or you can just uh, use it without your test. Uh, essentially, in that example. Uh, okay, so that um, so that was uh, that was the uh, standalone thing, and I guess I can show you guys. Uh, just um, like a normal like application. So, um, and can you read that? Um, I, what do you guys do? It's hot. I don't know. It's one person we don't know. I don't know. This priest. Pants up. Do you guys know how to do it? Try that. Yeah, just try that. <coughs> push up, push up. No, no. Uh, go, go and view to see if it'll let you zoom in.
on the running the server create an application. So I'm not going to make a typo just to demonstrate this double And then, uh, as you could see, I didn't have like a separate step to compile. I could compile if I wanted to. I mean, there is like an SPT test uh, defined there. But uh, if you just keep, you know, working like a normal workflow, it doesn't even require uh, to, to run a compile thing. Because if all do that, uh, then they just keep uh, the refresh in your browser. So as you could see, I didn't execute anything. Uh, now it says that I get the type of there. Let me go back to my application. What is that? But but anyway, so uh, so I fixed the error, it has the browser, and now it's kind of compiling. I use text right now. And boom, the application came back. So that's the kind of the uh, the kind of like the on the fly compilation so, that I was, I was talking about. And as I mentioned, this experience uh, uh, is there for CSS, JavaScript, uh, routing, templates, everything. And so you're going to have exactly the same uh, rapid application development experience, pretty much no matter which part of the application you, 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 you're dealing with, whether you're a front end person or a back end developer. It's going to be the same. Did, did, did I get you right that uh, Play is not using any of the available uh, Scala templating engine, but it's using its own proprietary development? That uh, yes, that's correct. What's, what's the name of that? Uh, it's... Yeah. Play. <laughs> 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 that, that's another special name. It's always a play template. But, uh, but as, as I mentioned, like, uh, because... Uh, and that was, uh, that was that there, uh, other thing. Uh, these days, uh, we have such specific ideas about uh, how we want to deal with, uh, with, the, with the whole development <coughs> that... Uh, they have like, oh, I, I like this tool, I, I can't live without this tool. So if you like uh, a different computing engine, we really need it easy to, uh, uh, we need it easy to test it up if you want. So if you want to use a different computing engine, that's fine. If you use like a different, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, like a database which is not uh, rich enough, that's fine. You can just create like a plugin if you have any, any library that you would like to integrate. You can have just a core and you can just uh, create like a plugin really simple and just uh, have your own, essentially you can have your own uh, play. And, uh, I mentioned this Node.js example, but uh, there really the, the focus is not so much on the framework, but more like the ecosystem that uh, you know, Node.js has. That, that was my main point. Just to confirm what you're saying, I used to scale with Play 1.2 and yeah. I used, uh, I tried to use J, but I wonder if you've seen their uh, Scammel. Style template. Yes. So you do have lots of support for that sort of template syntax. <coughs> any working on those style of uh, templates, or do you know if uh, you guys are working on those? Or yeah. So uh, the the main reason why uh, for some integrating those, I, I I used to work on uh, the integration for the, the previous version. It was really hard because because of all this kind of special kind of runtime that Play 1.0 had. The 2.0 is really simple. So when, when people think that like it, it's going to be like a special <coughs> integration for Scalate, for them, for it's, uh, it's not really necessary. You can be, you start using it. Just go to your SPP project, edit as a dependency, and so there is nothing. Yeah, it was kind of a bitch. Hmm? It was kind of a bitch. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but like uh, again, like the, the 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 main problem there was that because the the platform was using all these kind of uh, tricks. That's why I think that we can get the existing libraries with the, the, uh, the previous version is really hard. And I like for me uh, personally, like this kind of the fact that like we really stand there, like that's that, that's like huge. Like for example, like when we're dealing with like cloud providers, the fact that like we don't require anything special, uh, that's like that makes the whole experience really easy if you want to have like a Heroku uh, kind of support. It's not like you have to have the play runtime. You can just really just you know we have the, the dependency in a ID repository and that's it. Yes. Yeah, okay. <coughs> uh, is there any 
support for, you know, when you get a, a, some sort of compilation error or some any kind of error, to actually bring it back to an editor? Oh, uh, I think uh, uh, I'm right, but it used to be with the standard, no, it's not, not there. But um, yeah, I think if you, um, it used to be there with like putting there, but, uh, but no, like, I mean, right now, for sure, you have to go there. <coughs> um, so, the way that what I did as a part of uh, working that I uh, like to provide them. Um, Uh, for, uh, for example, like email, phone number. 
numbers and, and uh, other things. So, so I think that DSL is pretty straightforward, and I can. Uh, I can even show the, um, the application. But I, I think like here the, the, the main kind of like I guess takeaway is that uh, now we have like a kind of like a we define like a form with like a the kind of like standard like validation uh, kind of uh, requirements. So we say that like a phone number should get phone number and email should get email. And uh, again, this is the part where we, uh, uh, where we kind of like uh, uh, handling the force submission. Mm -hmm. so that, like, if there was any validation error, then uh, show the error case. And if there was, uh, if was anything go right, then uh, it should show the summary. Okay, so let's see that uh, application really quickly. Uh, sorry, that's the sign up form. I to show that. Uh, yes, that's a really good question. Um, uh, so 
so we have like uh, this kind of uh, cross splitting uh, uh, kind of like secure stuff there to generate like um, a certain kind of uh, uh, ID. So when you submit a form, then you check that there, that ID is, um, uh, is theirs, and if it's not there in an encrypted format, then we're not going to accept that form. And so, so uh, we, we escape them so it's by default and, and things like that. So that happens automatically. And the way it works is that like, um, we have like a play-specific configuration file. And when you create like a new application, uh, then we randomly generate uh, a kind of like a, a key for you. And that's the key that uh, we use to encrypt everything, uh, everything uh, like that. So for example, if you have like a form ID, we use that uh, as a key to generate the secret ID. Yeah. You, you haven't said anything about session management yet. Is the uh, you know, is the key that gets sent out an encrypted version of something that's uh, that's in a session object? Uh, so session wise, like the only thing we have is like an encrypted cookie, and that's the the kind of key for that uh, encryption. But we don't keep anything else in the in the system. We don't have like any other version besides just like an encrypted cookie. The idea is that if we have uh, if you have like a cache, if you would like to keep like something around, like I mean. You can the session ID and keep anything in your cache. But uh, because the whole idea is that like, uh, we try to be as stateless as possible, mm -hmm. which is the domain name is state. What's the production product look like? Is this created for a file that I can deploy production? Uh, that's also a very good question. So um, underneath uh, the, the, the current um, uh, implementation, the, 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 the runtime environment right now is using Netty. Uh, so the way it works is like this is the development console, but uh, you can either package it up uh, like the, the whole thing as like a pet jar uh, right now, or you can just uh, run uh, run it with the, with the start command, and then like you get like a PID, and so it's going to uh, run it in the background. Uh, like regular stuff. One of the things that uh, I well, was actually uh, planning to talk about, like what uh, what's coming next after we release 2.0. And one of the things then, I guess that we came up, I can talk about it now, that uh, we couldn't that deliver what we wanted was like server support. And the main reason <coughs> is that like, because the server uh, API is so limited uh, in terms of providing like uh, streaming and uh, synchronous support that uh, we, we actually had to figure out like well, what exactly we can deliver with the server. So that's that's the only reason why we have um, that, that why we have not the only, but we will provide like server uh, uh, server packaging as well, which essentially means like a, a war file as opposed to a fed chart. That's coming uh, right after we release two point zero. So what I see it, what are evolutions? Uh, the, uh, the, that's for like uh, managing your database scheme. So, yeah, migration. So I can show you actually an action right there. <coughs> One of these samples using like some key memory databases, which is using databases. So, we shouldn't have anything else in this one. Do you have evolutions in play 1.0 and productivity? Uh, I think uh, now there is like a module that's uh, kind of uh, providing something like that, but uh, it's not definitely not in the core. You don't have to go into it, other people are interested. No, I mean, I can, I can show you actually, I think it's a, it's a nice uh, uh, feature. So the way it works that um, the first time you do, you, you, you put your application in the, the, the demo, then it's gonna, uh, it's gonna check whether you have the evolution table created in your database. If it's not the case, then it's the component get that this compilation screen where you say that like oh, oh so you have to run that screen. Uh, the way it works is it's, uh, it's generating SQL files so in production the same thing <coughs> works in such a way that like you you, you could either run uh, uh, run evolution when you start the application or you could use the SQL file to your admin who could run the SQL file for you but in this particular case you can just apply that So that was, uh, that was evolution. 
And the next example, so uh, again, like this is something uh, uh, something I, I find really interesting and uh, I'm particularly excited about, uh, and that's um, that's um, like alpha integration. One of the reasons why I'm excited, uh, besides that, like uh, those guys are awesome, is that um, uh, what I always find them kind of thinking about development is providing like this kind of like streaming uh, support or like uh, at least uh, try to make that as easy as possible. I was always struggling with like uh, providing like uh, I don't know like um, I don't know creating like online service that I can compose somehow or like a whole uh, I O. Uh, consuming I/O and providing I/O in such a way that like I can create like generic framework to deal with I/O. That was always like really problematic, and uh, and uh, one of the reasons why I'm extremely afraid to point there is because it provides this framework that uh, that you can use to um, to deal with I/O. So in this particular example, uh, and I'm uh, I'm going to be going into too much detail, but I hope I can see your sense what I'm talking about in terms of. Uh, I'm going to show an example where uh, this was used from the standard Alpha um, demo page where like just calculate something that, uh, it's just like a uh, deep calculation and nothing special about it. But well, what it really represents uh, this example where uh, you can run some calculation and then uh, we can send that result as synchronized to the browser and we'll be just using the actors. And uh, here is the uh, here is the application. And you can see that like we have um, essentially two uh, uh, two kind of actions. One actually is just showing the uh, the, the main page, and the next one is where the action is happening. And as you can see there, there is a, there's a new thing uh, which we haven't seen before, where it's like an action can have an asynchronous result. And what you see there is that like we send messages to to this actor that uh, we just defined, and then we map the result. Uh, to the response, and we send everything asynchronously over the wire. So I'm just going to demonstrate this really quickly. Of course, the example probably is not the best one, but as you can imagine, this, uh, this idea can be used uh, uh, for, for some of the uh, real stuff that you, that you have to run, like certain calculations or like a backend job in the background and waiting for the response. So, here is just like uh, the calculation again, uh, nothing, uh, <coughs> nothing uh, uh, too fancy, but again, like uh, I just have to give you guys uh, an idea about how to create like this kind of asynchronous uh, services. And uh, the next one is also like an asynchronous thing. It's is going to show like a comment, a comment service. In all of these examples can be found on the website, so you can just uh, download, the, download the whole package and the uh, the distribution. And what I'm doing here is that's exactly what you can do uh, uh, at home. So uh, that's, that's why I thought I'd be very to the examples because everyone can uh, try them out. So what, what uh, we're going to do in this example is going to show the, the kind of like this uh, uh, comment. Uh, uh, and support that uh, that we have, which was built on this uh, emulator idea. Uh, so what we have here is that uh, we sending uh, sending over uh, the, the time uh, as as a kind of like a promise, and that we kind of stream that spam and that callback stream is basically the the JavaScript function that. Uh, pretty much uh, kind of fall back once once we have this one. And as you can see, uh, essentially this is going to be like a never ending story because uh, all we do is that like we generate the time and uh, so this is going to happen uh, kind of an endless survey. Uh, so that's about uh, well, I mean, it's a command survey. But everything is asynchronous with nothing with blocking. Which I, uh, for the corresponding JavaScript as well.
so uh, uh, if you remember, uh, like the callback, uh, very, very, uh, very <coughs> mind that a specific JavaScript method that you can call back, and that was uh, like to me. I can show you guys again. I'm the lights so here. That you see that that last stream, that um, uh, the uh, last stream in that specific like, um, action, that we could define that JavaScript callback for that streaming activity, and this is the correspondence. Essentially, com calling the comment constructor and passing the callback method. So, time is set from the server to the mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. Again, okay, maybe that's the best example, but So the next one is gonna show you like um, kind of like even more complicated example where we're gonna use Kafka to implement like a chat room. Uh, and what's interesting about this particular example, like you you you, you can see now like, that uh, kind of format uh, support that uh, just a moment ago. But we, this particular example we go even further because uh, what we do in here really is that uh, we send um, we send um, the different Chunks. So, like, uh, we have like uh, an actor that's kind of sending messages between, uh, between kind of like users, and then uh, we take this information. So, when somebody is writing something, then we send this information to the, to the other user uh, in chunks. So, it's kind of like uh, you have like actors that uh, really participate in this whole uh, workflow. I don't think I'm going into too much support, I'm just going to run this, but I guess I think it's going to be a good idea what, uh, what you really can do with the So how how is hack of messages getting to the the browser? Is it the same mechanism you showed earlier? Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's using format uh, okay. to uh, to really interact with the browser. But the, the main difference between this and uh, the other example was that like here, like essentially what happened was that like when we got uh, small messages from actors, we kind of map those messages and, uh, to in chunks. We essentially map those messages to chunks and then we send that input. The browser kind of asynchronously instead of like the usual kind of uh, uh, kind of the, the usual kind of like streaming thing there, like you have to wait for everything. Really good deal with I/O in chunks. Um, 
surprisingly, uh, this is going to be really similar uh, to the previous one, except because like, oh, of course, like, we have like, this uh, defined like a, a different kind of protocol, like, uh, so we have like a, a, a protocol support with the happy. But otherwise, exactly the, uh, the same idea as far as dealing with IO.
oh, it's a, it, it has nothing to do with the protest uh, framework. Uh, essentially, like that running part of the, this what matters, so you can you can use anything you wish. People are picky about uh, their template solutions, and <laughs> <laughs> so. But anyway, yeah. So um, so uh, uh, because we rely on SVT. Every framework, any framework that has BT supports that framework, but I mean, any test framework that implements that test, uh, uh, test uh, interface uh, can be used with the uh, with pages, right? I think includes JUnit, uh, SPAC, and Scala test. Uh, yes, so that was, that was testing. Uh,
And um, so this is like a this is like a standard uh, configuration that you could uh, say that like uh, if you want to plug in a Hadoop database, then you can turn up that plugin uh, just by Typing like PD plugin uh, or disable or like EH cache, whatever disable. And then we have, uh, uh, you mentioned this registry, so by default uh, we have the following plugins uh, uh, kind of configured for, for the core framework. You can see the kind of order that those plugins uh, are kind of like uh, wired up, but you can overwrite it with, with your own version. So you can disable any of these and then just um, provide a single file. So you can register your plugin. So if someone wants to replace EH cache plugin with their own cache, they would change line 600 there. Um, what they would do, they would uh, come here and add the EH cache plugin table, and then they would create their own uh, play plugins file and just add their own version. Be like just to make sure this code is at the same time as the previous one, so it would be 600. So uh, the first thing you have to do, you have to replace, uh, you have to disable uh, another plugin if it's like a replacement, and then you have to just register your own plugin. So I'm still missing something. And how is the application going to know? Uh, where's the common name that this plugin and the other plugin share so that mine will get called instead of yours? Uh, so, going back to uh, the, the, uh, the cache implementation, uh, the e cache um, kind of plugin is extending uh, this kind of generic interface for uh, cache. And that's like, yeah, that's like, like this guy, right? And uh, so basically, what uh, we're we'll always saying here is that, like, uh, for for any backend, uh, we require uh, the uh, we require the other stream and that uh, that uh, as, uh, API cache API, and if you go and check cache API. Essentially, what we're saying that like, if you want to provide like, a man cache version, that you have to implement this cache API and then create I'm, your. I'm cache completely plan. with you, but is something going to search for things that implement the cache API trait? Or is this registered somewhere that that's the name you use when you make the object in order to call it? So, within your application, you have this play plugins uh, uh, file. And in that file, you have your whole class. And then, essentially, uh, because uh, we assume that like, this is a plugin, then, then, we, then we just execute it. But then in your application code, how do you get, get reference to that? So you can call the cache API. Yeah. yeah, I'm literally looking for the Scala object. Oh, I saw it there. Object cache. So basically, what's happening is we, uh, <coughs> we provide like a kind of like a, a, kind of like a wrapper for for uh, uh, for underlying services, but essentially what you're doing, I think, is this is what you guys are asking about. <coughs> this is how right. you can, uh, <laughs> can, can access it, but you know, because it's not like the nicest thing, uh, you can of always provide like a, kind of like a, 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 an extra object that just help you really just use it in a much more pleasant way. Yeah. But uh, uh, essentially, what you need to do is just this. That we say that like give me the cache plugin and then we would like to execute this specific method and time this time. Sorry about that. I think this is this will make a really good example as you continue to flush out the examples for Play 2.0. An example of you know another caching engine and an example of a template engine, something really stupid and simple, obviously. Yeah.
those things would make it really easy to, <coughs> to extend to things that, in a way that Play 1 and 1.2 wasn't as easy. I, I, I totally agree. Um, I mean, right now, really, uh, the only uh, constraint is that like, we just want to release like 2.0, so we're kind of focusing on the APIs, and like, there are like, a few things <coughs> we can do, for example, providing uh, kind of like an alternative template uh, engine support, or to reduce plugin, which uh, actually I'm planning uh, to write, but it's just like, first we want to release 2.0, and then at least, uh, at least <coughs> right now the main focus is really on just making sure that the, the generic APIs are, are yeah, and that makes sense. But I think also, you know, the APIs are only as good as they're comprehensible. So that's true. But um, that's why we try to eat our own, you know, that thing. So like, I mean, the whole plugin thing changed tremendously because uh, we started adding more and more plugins to that the system. So uh, <coughs> uh, if you go back to the plugin definition, on that you have base API cache plugin. Here, so. Uh, Dave API. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, is this cache API is given by is a wrapper around the EH cache or is it provided by the? Oh yeah, that's that's just like a small wrapper provided by us. The only EH uh, cache specific thing is happening here. So tomorrow, if I have a MongoDB or something else, um, for that, what I would use? Will that be available from Play or will be? Play? So then uh, you would just implement this API and then uh, create like a plugin for that and then you would just register that plugin and start using it. So just to be more specific, so then the steps you would need to follow, which I think actually uh, the, that thing uh, mm -hmm. is documented uh, on the new wiki, we, okay. because now we're focusing on documentation. Uh, uh, I hope that like it's gonna be much <coughs> more. Uh, it's gonna be much easier for developers to, to create plugins. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, we will definitely make sure that uh, it's documented. Uh, but uh, going back to this, so that uh, the steps we need to uh, take would be like first implement uh, uh, this cache API. So system cache API. Boom, that's done. And the next step would be uh, create like a mem cache plugin, and uh, that will be. And in, in this main cache plugin, you would right now we here we create like an e uh, uh, e h cache version, but here we would create like a main cache version, and then you would register a new plugin and uh, using uh, this uh, uh, yeah so this snippet then like you would reference the right. generic thing, but uh, here we as you can see we are reference a cache plugin as opposed to that. Complete implementation. So that's how you can replace it with your own uh, uh, implementation. Of course, like if a plugin uh, is not generic enough, uh, if somebody is referring to a concrete implementation, then it's kind of possible. But assuming that somebody provides you an API, uh, at least then you should be able to provide a different backend. Fundamental here is that you can have one cache. One cache and whole application. Uh, so this particular cache stuff is used for <coughs> framework. So that's just of course one, but you can register like a new cache plugin with a different API. So say if I have memcache, uh, of course memcache provides a uh, much richer uh, kind of like intent case. So like if I would like to use those features, then what I would do, I would create like one which would just implement the system one, and then would create like another one, which would uh, give me access to the manic specific stuff. But uh, that's not something that like is worth kind of you know uh, pushing into this really time, time, time. I think it is more about just uh, set like a value and retrieve a value with like expiration. But like memcache cache and like you, you can have uh, I don't know like multi key set, multi key retrieval, like. You can have all sorts of crazy uh, things with Mancash or Redis or So you can, in other words, you can have two cache plugins. This one is just more like for the system. This is the internal one. Do, do you have an example with uh, an endpoint that handles JSON either for Ajax or for the rest of you? Yes. 
like, um, kind of demonstrate, like, um, how to use the, the kind of, like, the asynchronous uh, kind of uh, client library that we have. So, like, I'm talking about specifically, like, about this part. So what uh, you see here is that, like, um, before, we do actually post to the application, but everything is happening asynchronously. So that's why we have this avoid, uh, essentially, kind of, uh, uh, Blocking that before and saying that, like, okay, so uh, I will try to retrieve that value. But that underlying core, like this guy, yeah. <coughs> this guy here, uh, that's like a thing. <coughs> so, what I could do here, potentially, I could just call like a URL because it uh, gives me like a play promise and I could just send it to the browser that it uh, got, and then the URL. Uh, Kind of like a, so when I pass this all the information from that service, that from the JSON service, then for you we would have the uh, the response, but everything is asynchronous. So I could make a call to I don't know Twitter, get their JSON feed, and you know, stream it to the user. So a little further down line forty one, is that uh, is that mapping the response back to uh, a defined type user? And then querying to collapse. Oh yeah, I mean, so that uh, again, this is our kind of uh, functionality. Maybe not the best example, but yeah, I mean, what we what we are kind of testing here is that um, like you can retrieve information and then uh, wrap it back to to JSON. So in this particular case, it would be like a domain object um, which is uh, user and like the base the whole JSON support is working that you have to define your format so you can serialize into and uh, from that particular domain object. <coughs> like if you get some uh, JSON from, from the underlying uh, resource and then you create like a domain object from it. And that's the most convenient way to handle JSON, is to, to deserialize it into a domain object. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the JSON uh, um, kind of implementation, uh, I think it's really uh, kind of interesting, probably the the close as to say uh, as JSON, as JSON, if you know that uh, Scala library, which is also using this kind of extractor, so leave JSON there, that you can use all these extractors to, uh, to deal with um, uh, JSON. The JavaScript generation, they've got. Um, like, uh, uh, the, the one we have is uh, CoffeeScript. We don't have anything right now, but uh, actually there are many uh, interesting ideas happening in this space in Skyland. Uh, so we hope if um, any of these solutions are maturing, I'm talking about uh, from Scala to JavaScript com uh, compilation, uh, we, we potentially could have something similar to closure of script, which is like basically a kind of like a closure to, from closure to JavaScript. Uh, Thankfully, closure is so well loaded, uh, especially when it comes to the JavaScript, because there is a <coughs> closure compiler. Which, anyway, uh, so. you measured the memory footprint for the stack? Okay. Uh, yes, um, so um, that was the other kind of uh, benefit of uh, first switching to Aka <coughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then also like uh, kind of like uh, trying to stay away from what is kind of like uh, necessary about the uh, kind of uh, resource <coughs> and sensitive hack that uh, the one point zero had because uh, now I put the memory for a few things and uh, the, the performance became much better. That was partly because of, I guess, um, Like, I don't know if it's like a uh, because of uh, performance, but I mean, 
I mean, we, we tried on like a, a, a few platforms, but like I don't have like a benchmark uh, right now. But uh, yeah, I mean, based on <coughs> our, uh, our results, it was like, promising. But of course, this is something that uh, you guys should you know, uh, tell us if uh, the flight is slow or But I do hope that it's going to be fine. Right? Uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure I think that uh, the biggest question is, uh, like, for example, What's missing from the center which we actually hope to have uh, was uh, server support and the fact is that kind of we worked on both, so it was just more kind of like a timing thing. Uh, so the idea definitely comes uh, in the very near future. And uh, the expected it is uh, sometime in, in, in February. We actually uh, can never release it uh, with the uh, with, uh, with Afghan. This year, last year, Yeah, not that we did with teachers and promises. Not in the future, but it's, it's coming right after it. Uh, I mean, like, you ran into issues out of our I mean, and it was a lot of but we not had to be just in this it's actually the right time to do it. We can just try it out, but it is why we were working on it, like, if you were on the developer, so you can do it for the development process, and I'm sure that we broke the process. Yes. 
SBT integration? Is it just like a stock SBT? And is it the latest version? And how will you follow the, the development of SBT? Like, what, how awkward will that be? Uh, so the big first set uh, we built on uh, 11, 0, 11, 0 0.2. Uh, and because uh, SBT is built within type 6, so we have uh, but uh, the generic thing is that um, we provide like an extra layer on top of that CP, be it an SPP. So I try to really kind of hide kind of the, the complexity that sometimes can pop up sometimes the really on the end, especially if you're a child developer, like uh, some of those things can be people who have that information. We try to hide that. It's like everything that has FPC provides is there. It's just like one time of the year that uh, yeah, we have it, but everything is sent there. Like, if you add the asset dependency, please actually have plug in an SBT and that provides everything. So, if you have SBT installed, you don't even need that page. It's just like you need that uh, chart to reference an SBT file, you will get exactly the same. It's just not going to be called the SBT file. So the one piece of feedback and maybe things or request that I would have is, um, yeah, this is going on one gentleman's repeated questions up. So how do you definitely do, do this? Um, I love that you're going to making things more configurable and allowing to substitute pieces, but I think that it will really help if you take the implicit assumptions and the implicit you know configurations and find a way to make them explicit somewhere so that. The things that are configurable and the, the entry points are explicit and they can be seen in one easy to, to find place. It sort of follows, you know, the pattern that Clay is following, the pattern that, that Rails follows as well. Is the more things that you can communicate cleanly, the more powerful it becomes. I love that you're engineering to that, but I think you should also look at how to make it easier to see and to interact with those options. That is, I 100% agree. And like uh, just the other day, I uh, somebody uh, mentioned the same thing that like, oh, uh, I can do that. Like, uh, you know, uh, it would be nice to have all these options, like a cheat sheet, or just like a wiki page with the uh, available options, or even within the the main uh, application account, like you could have that information there for what you can turn up. And up. Yeah, I mean, as much as good play developers should read through play source code, uh, most of us probably would rather. Not when we need to do something fast. Uh, actually, uh, that's one of the, the main reasons why we start uh, like adding new features because we still have to be big, and that's our main focus. Just to make sure that, like, I mean, if you check the, uh, the documentation today and two weeks ago, it's like, uh, like, really like, I don't know, 30, 40 pages more than that. Great. In fact, I would recommend that uh, if you guys are interested. Uh, Thank you very much.